Today, I'm standing on a hillside that some 400 years ago played host to the very first Olympic Games staged here in Britain. Where am I? Well, all will be revealed in just a moment. Um, not so sure I like that. But a house combining old and new gets them smiling. I'm excited. I yes. am excited. You really are. You're beaming. Today I'm in the Cotswolds and this is Dover's Hill, which in 1612 was the location of the Cotswold Olympics, a tradition which is still going some 400 years later. Gaining the royal seal of approval from King James I, the Games were the vision of a local lawyer, Robert Dover, and they included such illustrious events as sledgehammer throwing, sword fighting and even shin kicking. Eccentric it may sound, but this historic local custom got a celebrated mention in the winning bid for the London 2012 Olympic Games. Now that's what I call keeping the torch burning. Covering an area of nearly 800 square miles, the Cotswold region crosses six county borders, including Gloucestershire, Worcestershire and Oxfordshire, and is England's largest designated area of outstanding natural beauty. As one of the most unspoiled regions of England, the Cotswolds are famous for their pretty honey-coloured limestone villages, gentle undulating hills and scenic rivers, with England's longest, the Severn, meandering through its landscape. It was the wool trade during the Middle Ages that made this area prosperous. Cotswold sheep were renowned throughout Europe for the quality of their wool, which commanded a high price. This wealth enabled wool merchants to leave their architectural mark with an array of fine houses and wall churches, such as those in Chipping Camden, surviving to this day. The region is still favoured by the rich and famous, all drawn to the harmonious mix of stunning countryside and beautiful properties it offers. Not surprisingly, the charm of the Cotswolds is reflected in the price of the properties around here. The cost of the average detached house in the central belt starts at 500,000 pounds, and that is, double the national average. Furthermore, for a similar property in an exclusive heritage village like Chipping Camden or Hare in Lower Slaughter, you can expect to pay up to £750,000. But don't despair, there are still some parts of this region which are affordable. As you head westwards towards places like Stroud, you could pick up a detached property for about £350,000. But wherever you're looking, one thing's for sure, there are plenty of fabulous architectural styles on offer in this region. Many of the Cotswold villages are characterised by the famous Jurassic limestone, whose distinctive colour and malleability make it an extremely desirable natural building material. The stone is still quarried in the region, and the unique golden colour is a result of centuries of weathering. However, there are variations in colour. The stonework found in the northern Cotswold villages, such as Stanton and Broadway, is darker than that found in the south. You'll find a two-bed, mid-terrace stone cottage typically costs around £375,000. Thatch is also a recurrent theme across the region. The Cotswold thatch is of the wheat reed variety, and depending on the size of the property, can come with a large price tag. For example, this five-bedroom detached thatched house in Chipping Camden would set you back £1.36 million. There's certainly a rich mix of properties here in the Cotswolds, but will any of them tempt our buyers? Let's meet them and find out. Alan and Sue live in Switzerland, but are back in the UK looking for a home. Alan is a media consultant and Sue is a former director of a pharmaceutical company. But while they've been winding down their work commitments over the past few years, they've been reflecting on what they want to do with the rest of their lives. Both of our working days were very, very frenetic, often starting at 5.30, 6 in the morning, right up till 8, 9 at night. In my case, you know, seven days a week, you know, for many, many months. And it was very nice to have a much slower pace where both of us could be in the same location where we can actually have quality time together. Our buyers have lived in the Swiss Alps for the last 10 years, and even though they've enjoyed their life in the mountains, they recognise a couple of key elements are missing. The most important things at the end of the day are people, family and friends, and so we, we're very fortunate, I think, to have a little bit more time at this time in our lives to spend with our family and friends and the people that matter to us. And to have a local pub. <laughs> 
After doing some research on the internet and visiting a few counties in the UK, they've decided the Cotswolds is where they want to be. We're looking to move to the Cotswolds for a number of reasons. The, the landscape is very, very special. It's, I think, relatively unique, certainly unique to the area. But the colour of the stone and the, the woodland area is very, very unique here. And it's very different, certainly very different from Switzerland. And that, I think, in one respect, is part of the lure of this area. And the house will have to match their ideal location. We both know that there are very good reasons why we want to move back to the UK, but because we do have this very privileged, lovely life in Switzerland, it's very important for us to find the right house and for it to be, everything has to be right. Otherwise, I think we have so much to give up, it will make the decision either very difficult or we'll end up regretting perhaps a decision and we don't want to do that. For Sue, top of the property wish list is the kitchen. I do like to cook. I've always dreamed of having an island in the kitchen and never managed it so far. So to actually find an island in a nice kitchen would be a dream. For Alan, it's all about the garden. I've always had a dream of having a classic, quintessential English walled garden where you can spend an entire day just pottering away, generating or producing vegetables for the entire village. And also in terms of a little refuge somewhere at the bottom of the garden <laughs> so when there's a football match on you can have a little fridge with a sofa and put your feet up and watch the a match typical somewhere to escape the wife yeah <laughs> sue though also has a plan to escape the husband opening up a tea room in a nice village location is something that certainly i would take into consideration and investigate further i'm very interested in it <laughs> Well, before Alan starts tucking into the produce, let's nail the finances. Our budget is £1.5 million. There is flexibility. Crucially, it's all to do with the house. And if we found something which was really special, we would be flexible. Alan and Sue have asked us to focus their house search in the northern part of the Cotswolds, around the town of Evesham, as they have family and friends living there. They would also like good access to road links, so they can travel quickly to London to visit Alan's family. I caught up with them on their arrival in the county to find out more about the kind of property they are after. Sue and Alan, welcome to the Cotswolds. It's so beautiful here, isn't it? It really is, yes. Fantastic. It's gorgeous. So what sort of property do we need to find you to make this move work? Well, you've got to find us a special property. <laughs> <laughs> That's really helpful. I do know what yes, you mean. Okay. You want that feeling when you walk yes. in, I'm sure. It, we've got such a lovely house in Switzerland. We will only come back, I think, if we find the right property. It has to be special. It's got to be the right one. It's got to have a minimum of four bedrooms. It's got to have light. For you, Sue, what's the absolute must-have? Well, it's going to be very boring, but I want a really nice kitchen because... <laughs> Everyone wants a really nice <laughs> Not kitchen. Not at all. Yeah. But I do very much enjoy cooking, like a lot of people, and eating. And yes, a lovely kitchen with um, hopefully a nice eating area as part of it. And Central maybe Island. Central Island. I've always wanted one, never had one. Well, we've talked about the house. What about the land? How much land do you want? Uh, well, the most important thing about the land is that it is enclosed, that we have a private garden. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've always had a dream for a walled garden, haven't you? A walled garden, yeah. a walled kitchen garden specifically, would be fantastic, where you can have clear designation of herbs and different vegetables. Well, cash buyers, a great budget and a beautiful county. Should we go look at some houses? Yep, yes, please. let's do. Let's go. Alan and Sue may have a very generous budget of £1.5 million, but there are some specific requirements they're looking for in their country property, including a kitchen with an island, a minimum of four bedrooms, a light airy interior with character features, and a large private walled garden. We've got three wonderful yet very different properties to show them, but of course we won't be letting them know the price of each until they've had a guess first. As ever, our final offering is the mystery house, which is more unusual than its surroundings suggest. I'm taking Alan and Sue to Winchcombe, a town around 10 miles south of Evesham. The name Winchcombe means valley with a bend, and today the town still retains streets which curve gracefully along the vale. If you're a keen walker, it's an ideal location to head off into the countryside, either for a gentle stroll or a vigorous long-distance trek. 
and after working up an appetite out in the hills, you'll be spoilt for choice when it comes to eating and drinking here. Take your pick from afternoon tea or the dish of the day in a local pub. Now let's put our best foot forward with our first property, a characterful grade two listed house with an historic past hidden within. Well, here we are, property number one. This is a real period property. It's it medieval. Looks it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to take in though, so what are your first impressions? Well, it certainly looks impressive and it certainly looks old. My only concern would be on the inside, is it dark and old? But we will see. You will see indeed. What do you perfect think? location. Can't wait to get inside. I think on that note then, let's have a look. Okay, okay good. thank you. A house that is definitely to Alan's taste. As for Sue, I think all her reservations about period properties could be quashed as we go into the first room. Well, in we come. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, indeed. <laughs> Now, wow. although it's, uh, it's a medieval property, it's grade two listed, there have been additions over the years. This, this part was added back in the uh, 18th century, and we've had some in the 19th century. And the current owner has renovated inside over the last two years, including this kitchen. Well, didn't expect to find looking at the fireplace mm. and then turning around and seeing a kitchen. Mm. That's, that's quite amazing. Yeah. Certainly got your central aisle. Yes, it's got my island. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's one heck of an island. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty big. Yeah, but it's nice. It's, the wood's nice. Yeah, it really is. Very nice. Unexpected. 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 Yeah, well, you didn't expect to like no. it, did you? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Smaller rooms, perhaps? Yeah, it's, not, yes. it's not too dark. Yeah. Let me take you through to the oldest part of the property. Okay. Have a look in here. Now, the origins of this property started here. It was a chapel. So we are standing in a medieval chapel. From the outside, you can see, you'll see the chapel window. It's bricked in, but still quite beautiful. And now it's a snug. It's Great. very snug. <laughs> in fact, it's an old chapel. Um, not so sure I like that, but, um, and with the low beam, I think I'll try and rearrange it in my head a few times. A slight change in mood, sadly, as this room's religious origins haven't got Alan singing from the rafters. However, there is also a useful study for them on this floor. Hopefully, he'll be more impressed with what the master bedroom offers upstairs. Now, they've managed to create a master suite up here. Gosh. That's... They didn't have them in medieval times. No, exactly. <laughs> You've got this as your main bedroom, but through there, there's a dressing room and a quite sizable ensuite bathroom as well. There is one other bedroom on this floor and a family bathroom. Then up another flight of stairs, there are two more light and airy double bedrooms. With the house covered, it's time to head outside. Well, this is the garden. I've got to say, it's probably the one drawback of this property. This is what you get with the house. The view. <laughs> I'm glad that you said just, that. The view, <laughs> is, the view is stunning. That is very special. Yeah. I'm not put off by the lack of space. I think this is... Uh, yeah, I think it's just, big enough, actually. We could, we could just just live with that. And there's a beautiful little... What, I'm glad you spotted that as well. That? The water you would be drinking here is filtered from this very spring, so you've got your own water source. Oh, so be a bit like Del Boy trying to <laughs> yeah. bottle, it, you know. bottle it and sell it to the locals. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think a property like this is worth? You go first. OK. 1.4. OK. I'd say 1.1. Oh, but who was right? <laughs> <laughs> Put it out of Neither. That's for you. <laughs> okay. But you were closer. It's okay. on at 1.2 million. Right. Okay. okay. Puts into context what you can get for your money for a period property yeah, yeah. like yeah. that in this area. Yeah. Well, with all that in mind, why don't you spend a little bit more time kind of wandering okay. around this property? Because there is a lot to take in. And okay. I will speak to you a bit later okay. on. Good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. On the market for £1.2 million, this stunning chapel conversion offers them a slice of authentic Cotswold architecture. It features a bespoke kitchen with Sue's Dream Island, four bedrooms, it's a property that boasts a wealth of history and character, and it's all set in lovely parkland with the most amazing views. Oh gosh, it's very, really light and airy up here. Oh, and there's another room. A oh, second bedroom. So that's uh, two bedrooms on the top, two below, so, so that's four, four bedrooms, in total. Yeah. 
I do believe this has been a really good first house, not only because one of the things we thought we wanted was, as many people do, a characterful house, but it does actually start to put into perspective what having character means. The main living area uh, with the kitchen, which then unfolds to almost two other areas, a dining area and a sitting area with a fantastic fireplace. I'm really surprised with that. That's fantastic, really excellent. I've never seen anything quite like that. Mmm, are you taking it all in now? <laughs> yeah, certainly has a lot to take in. Yes. Awful lot. But only the first property. We've got more to see. It's designated areas of outstanding natural beauty, the Cotswold Hills and its beautifully preserved market towns and villages hold a worldwide appeal. The region's harmonious style of architecture is due to the use of the local limestone in everything from civic buildings, shops and houses to the dry stone walls that are so characteristic of the countryside. Many Cotswold properties have introduced this feature closer to home by enclosing their lawns and borders to create their own walled gardens, such as in the pretty village of Lower Slaughter. Alan and Sue are particularly attracted to this idea and are considering developing their own walled garden. But before getting to grips with the skills needed to do this, we first sent them to meet David Glenn from Huntsman's Quarry to see up close how this distinctive and desirable stone is sourced. Well. Here we are in our quarry in the Cotswolds. This is uh, where we get our walling stone from. The stone is a limestone and it's about 130 to 150 million years old. We actually uh, break the stone. We don't drill and blast, we break the stone using a 70 ton excavator with a hydraulic breaker on. After being cut, any potential walling stone will then be spread out and hand-picked from the mass of excavated stone before being sent away for processing. So what's the total production output per day? Well, the total output from the quarry per day is probably about 2,000 tonnes a day, but of that, only a small percentage um, actually is suitable for walling stone, probably about 100 tonnes a day. Of all the things that come out of this quarry, how much of them are used locally and how much of them do you sell either to other parts of the country or indeed overseas? 90% as a rule of thumb uh, that goes out of this quarry is used and consumed within 25 miles radius of here. One local craftsman who specialises in working with this walling stone is John Hepworth. He creates bespoke walling projects that range from large estates to the smaller private gardens. We sent Alan and Sue to meet him and get some first-hand experience of the skills needed. So here we have a, a wall in progress. You can see that we have uh, the wall in a various stages of being built. It's a new wall with new stone. We have this frame up called a profile frame, or a batter frame as it's known, it's a local term, which gives us the shape of the wall. Can you see that the wall is, is actually built in a slight pyramid section, which gives us the ability to have stability as the wall grows and comes up the ground. And the inside bits of the wall, which we call hearting, are as big a bit of stone as we can possibly fit into the centre of the wall. Let's put some hearting in. So, pieces like that, see. Don't be frightened to turn this around. That's great. That's more like it. We can use smaller bits of stone to fill in the gaps. As Alan and Sue are obviously keen to lay down some solid foundations for their new life in the Cotswolds, we'll return to the job of helping them find their perfect property. For our second house, we're heading some six miles west from Winchcombe to Gotherington. Thought to have been founded in 780 AD and gaining a mention in a doomsday book, it's a relatively small village, but with some useful amenities, which include a local shop and post office, a tea room and a village hall. Many of the original historic houses are clad in local stone, but our second house is a more modern proposition. It's a stunning detached property built in the traditional 1920s style from the local Stanton Stone. Property number two. Take it all in. Yeah, it looks big. <laughs> very different, very, very different to the last one. This, this, this looks promising. Oh, yeah. look at that! This, this looks this, this. promising. Yeah. It does. It really it does. does. Yeah. I'm excited. I yes. am excited. You really are. You're beaming. Yes. What is it you like? I look, first of all, I love the stone colour again because we really do love this stone colour. 
but there's much bigger windows and there's a greater expanse of property that you can see which gives you the feeling it's going to be spacious inside. Shall we have a look inside? You seem yes, really please. excited about yes, the outside. Yes, yes. Yep. And I'm excited to show you the inside. Let's go. Now this impressive house perched on a hill has really got our buyers bubbling with enthusiasm and I'm sure that the inside won't disappoint either. Now, you wanted more space. Lai, what do you think of this for your living room? It's better, much better. And uh, It's the light as well. It's the light. And, yeah, double, triple aspect with... Oh, what a fireplace. Gorgeous what fireplace. What a fireplace. With Lovely. oak, beautiful oak floor. So out there you've got a conservatory, wonderful sun trap. Through here you have, well, enough space for three desks, so it's like a triple office. Excellent. I Fantastic. think I'll, I'll have that one then. <laughs> <laughs> but what was more important to you was the kitchen, wasn't it? It certainly was, certainly yes. Was. Yeah, I don't want to disappoint you with that. I hope you're not going to. <laughs> Should we go and have a look? <laughs> <Let's> go, <please. laughs> so, oh! <laughs> you wanted an island. Now we're talking! <laughs> It's oh, like it's a, a fantastic yeah. room. <laughs> this is a fantastic room. Mm. This is quite possibly the biggest island I've ever shown anyone. Anyway. It is. Mm -hmm. I know there are many lovely kitchens out there, but this is certainly one of them. And as you walk through, you came through a sort of dining area. Yes, we yes. Noticed. The way it works there it is used a lot by the family who live there at the moment. So utility space there, and then through that door, there's a garage and a room next to it. It's good to have some. You can almost it. smell freshly baked bread and a little pot of freshly made lemonade or whatever there as well. It'd be fantastic. So. You never know. You never know. You're getting great. a warm feeling about yeah, this one, good, aren't you? <laughs> it's a great time that Alan is actually imagining himself living here. There's also a second utility room which completes our tour of the ground floor. We're now heading upstairs to take a look at the bedrooms. This is the master. Oh, very, very nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Those are encouraging See. sounds. Yeah, it's very good. Light, yeah. isn't it light? And what you can tell, a beautiful view of the garden at the back. Yeah. And I think I spied to my left, can I say? An you can, suite, you have an ensuite, and it's a very generous size as well. So, fantastic. so you've got an ensuite for your master bedroom. You can also probably see that this leads through to another room. That's another bedroom with its own ensuite. And in fact, this property comes with five good sized bedrooms, all with their own oh, bathrooms. All? Okay. Oh. All. Right, OK. Well. That's a lot of toilets to clean. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show you one more of them because I okay. think you'll be okay. quite impressed. OK. Final bathroom. <laughs> And this is the last bedroom I wanted to show you. This is another master! <laughs> it is, oh. isn't it? Wow! So is this the master bed the master bedroom or another master bedroom? Well, this is the guest wing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a guest! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, this right. is like a luxury suite in a hotel, hotel. isn't it? Yeah. It is, but it Very could nice. be your home. Nice. The last thing I need to show you is outside. OK. So oh, let's have a look okay. at the garden. And then there's that very difficult question. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. That's the one. Okay. Start thinking. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We appear to be on to a winner here, as Alan and Sue have clearly been impressed with the overall space of this house. I'm just hoping that as we move outside, our buyers won't be overwhelmed with the amount of land that comes with this property. Here we are, the back of the house. Your garden pretty much wraps around. It's around the side, around the back. You can see it's all been beautifully yes. landscaped. So you get an acre of garden, as I say, wrapping around. Is, yeah. But then that way, you also get five acres of paddock. Good grief. Oh, and your friends, the sheep, are there at the yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's currently rented out to the local farmer, and so you've got the sheep grazing, okay. keeping the, the So at least you don't have to maintain it. With everything this house has to offer in mind, how much do you think it's on the market for? It's got to be probably 1.6 million. I also was going to say just over the budget, so let me go in between 1.55 then. This house is on the market at one point. Three five million. Good grief! It's fantastic. Mm. We still have enough left over for a um, decent car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, lots for you to oh, think about. Goodness. Go and have a wonder. So I'll come and seek you out later on. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank so. you. What a result. They loved that property from the moment we walked in, and it didn't fail to meet their expectations. 
And what I most loved is that they overvalued it, and I think that's a sign of just how much they love it. Coming in under budget at £1.35 million, the price of this detached house has been a welcome surprise for Alan and Sue. What's more, it meets many of the criteria on their wish list, providing them with a large living room with fireplace, a bespoke kitchen, five bedrooms in total, three with en suites, and two in a self-contained guest wing, and it's all set in six acres in an area of outstanding natural beauty. I think this is much more our type or style, simply from the point of view it's very practical and we would have you know, it, very little to do. Almost the biggest surprises for me and the nicest things about this house was not just the wonderful kitchen and the lovely feeling of space when you walked into the house, but was that feeling of space continued upstairs. I think it's fair to say that Alan and I are both very excited about this house. I think there's a danger of getting carried away and if we had the money in our back pockets now we'd almost be, if we could, be meeting with the owner and seeing what we could do because it has got such a lovely feel to it. I have high hopes for this one. Hey there. Yes. You managed to find your way out. You yeah. <laughs> almost didn't get us out. Yes. It's really, really lovely. Oh, I'm so pleased it's been positive but this is only the end of day one. There is more. As evening falls over the Cotswold skyline, our buyers can bask in the warmth of a successful first day's house hunting. After 10 years of being wedded to their respective jobs in Switzerland, Alan and Sue have decided to cast aside their careers and return home to England for a more tranquil life closer to family in the Cotswolds. So far, our converted chapel failed to fire up our couple's enthusiasm. But the 1920s house on a hill revived their spirits with its fabulous kitchen. However, could we have reached tipping point with our mystery house? This is just extraordinary. And I'll be meeting the new faces continuing the Cotswold wall tradition. Yesterday, I gave Alan and Sue a real flavour of the Cotswolds, showing them two very distinctive properties, one with all of the historical charm and the other with a very spacious layout. I've got to say, I think the second property really did capture their imagination and has given them some food for thought. But with our mystery house, it's time for something very different altogether. They'll be hard pushed to find a Cotswold stone in sight. Our mystery house is in the southwest area of the Cotswolds in Ewley. Now, it may be a fair distance from Evesham, which was Alan and Sue's ideal search area. However, we have found them a house that is truly unique. Before seeing the mystery property, we're going to pop into the creative hub of Ewley to the art centre and meet a local who runs the cafe. So what's the, what's the local community like? I mean, this is obviously a central focal point. I think it's very vibrant. There's a lot of things taking place. There's lots of activities. We've got a brewery, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. um, we've got an arts centre. We've got a pub and a post office. You know, there's, there are things taking place in Newley. So what's it like living around here? It's lovely. I mean, it's a very beautiful place to live. I wake up every morning and take a big, deep breath and go, oh, mm. my goodness, it's amazing. I really do. So, let's get back Excellent. to it. Good the Mystery work. House calls. Adam, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Now, we've taken a calculated risk with the Mystery House, which is a complete break from the Cotswold traditional style. It is uber modern, but it's also located in the grounds of a walled garden. So, fingers crossed, they'll like it. It's just like a Monet, Monet garden, isn't it? Well, here we are. Incredible. A Monet garden, indeed. We have the Mystery House. It's... Absolutely. Definitely a mystery. That is, <laughs> that is fantastic. I would never, honestly, I never would no, have imagined never that. Never have expected anything. A modern like this. house, wood, yeah. lead, quite interesting. Yeah, it was it's... designed and built by the current owners in 2007. Right. So it's a very modern building. Yeah. And only is it modern, it's an eco house. Excellent. Ah. Okay. I'm almost speechless and I'm really excited to get inside because I think this could be a very, very special property. It is very special indeed. Let me show you inside. Okay. Good. This is such an unusual property, I'm not surprised Sue is a touch tongue-tied, as well as intrigued. And inside certainly takes light and airy to a new level. And in we come 
So this part of the house was sort of almost underground, really. We've built, been built into the ground. It's concrete, and at the other end, it's uh, oak timber mm -hmm. frames. So it's unusual, the design and the setup. Now, they've made a great use of the space down here. The front, you've got a really good room, which they're using as a children's playroom, but mm -hmm. you could do as you wish. This is a gym with a wet room and sauna. Mm -hmm. That could be quite special. Well, shall we go into the living room and we can explore more kind of the features yes. of this property? So this is the main living room area. Oh, this is stunning. As you can see, you're looking out into the water and they have built the windows. Kind of the oak beams around. are exceptional. I love the wood and the view out of the window is, is stunning, but it feels somehow a cold room. I don't have the feeling of warmth in this house so far. Well, let's go through to the kitchen and see if you warm up a bit in there. Yes. Okay. So through a dining room area, which does lead oh, to the lovely. outside, but this is the kitchen. And yet another <laughs> island. Another island. Yeah. Didn't Fantastic. disappoint on the islands. And the, the, the angles and the view with the... Uh, the water outside mm -hmm. is just so special. And through that door, you do have a very large utility area, so all the laundry can get well, sorted helpful. out there. Mm -hmm. You're doing well, Denise. Good. You're doing well. <laughs> the ground floor is certainly spacious and includes a separate dining area, a cloakroom and a large study, all of which enjoy fabulous views out onto the grounds. However, I'm saving one of the best views till last. Now here's a highly unusual master. You don't often get to look out onto the roof the there, roof. <laughs> which is full of seed and flowers. More oak beams. Lighting is exceptional. Again, that's uh, really unusual. And it looks like there would be a very good view from the balcony. I think there is. Shall we have a look? Yeah. Up to you. I think this is the best view from this property. Well... You're right yeah. about that, Denise. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's it. You can get a feeling for the grounds, but uh, I know one of the areas you're really interested in was gardening and growing right. your own veg, and that's yeah. something they're very passionate about yeah, here. Yeah, that's an awful lot to look at. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Come on, let's have a wander okay. around. Back inside, there are four more good-sized bedrooms, one of which has an ensuite shower room. In addition, there's a separate family bathroom. As we move outside, the mature gardens have a natural stream feeding two ponds and there is a raised terraced area perfect for dining outdoors. You've got just under two acres, so 1.8. That's incredible. It runs as, right the way around the wall garden, okay. really, as so you can see the wall just up okay. there behind the trees and then up back round, round Good here. Grief. Now, over this side is a fantastic vegetable garden. They grow everything there. Right. And you have a little swimming pool there as well. Fantastic. All this and heaven too, then. Yeah. <laughs> You've also got this area here, which is where the original bungalow was. Now it's garage and storage, and mm -hmm. the current owners use it as a hobby and craft room. But you've got extra space there. Very special. Yeah. So special, but how much? I would think probably 1.7, 1.75, something like that. OK. Well, why don't I go a little bit closer to budget and say 1.6? You, Alan, are spot on. It's on right. at 1.75. Fantastic. Oh. Well, there's so much to take in here, and I think you'd be hard pushed to find a more unusual house Absolutely. in the Cotswolds. So mm. have awesome. a wander around, enjoy these gardens, go and go on a bit of a discovery journey, and I will seek you out later on. Okay, okay. thank All you right. very much. Thank you. I think they were blown away by that, but they did get the price spot on, and I think it's hard to value a property that's so unique. But if you wanted the best of the Cotswolds and the best of what's contemporary, you can't go far wrong with this. On the market for £1.75 million, our high-spec mystery house has certainly got our buyers considering whether they would opt for a more unconventional style of property. It includes a large open-plan living area, a modern and spacious kitchen with island, a bright and airy master with its own private terrace, four more bedrooms, and it's all set in a private walled garden with a vegetable plot and a swimming pool. The house is certainly not what I expected, and it would not have been on the top of our priority list. There's no Cotswold stone to be seen, um, a lot of wood, actually a lot of beautiful wood. We both love oak, um, and a lot of glass. First impressions were a big wow. The garden is exceptional. As with most men, you always have to succumb to female charms, and I think that what's going to happen here is Sue will do the usual 
suggestions about let's think about it and come up with some ideas and costings and then we'll go from there, which is code for saying no. Uh, but I'll be bat you know, batting hard to try and get, uh, get my pennies worth listened to at least. There you are. Yes. At last. I That's had, it. I had to find Alan. <laughs> I think he was doing his best to get lost so he could stay. It's an amazing property, but you have seen everything we have to offer now. Yes. To time. Although it was sheep that put the Cotswolds on the map from the late Middle Ages, the region's wool and cloth production declined during the early 19th century. As the mechanised factories further north created more efficient forms of textile manufacturing, the golden age of the Cotswold wool industry came to an end. But fast forward to the 21st century, it's making a bit of a comeback, albeit on a smaller scale and from an entirely different species that you wouldn't normally expect to find here. There are now over 1,000 alpaca owners in the UK breeding the animal for their fibre. The vast majority of breeders sell the fleece on to be processed, but at this farm just north of Swindon, they're actually spinning the wool and making a range of handcrafted items on site. I dropped in on Mim and Adrian Holcomb to find out more about how their modern spin on producing wool in the Cotswolds came about. <laughs> Guys, these are definitely some of the cutest animals I've ever seen on a farm. <laughs> I love them. I can see why you probably fell in love with them, but tell me about the journey from kind of corporate life to running an alpaca farm. We sold a couple of companies um, and we literally spent three years looking for something to do, something that was exciting, a little bit different, something that we could get really involved with that didn't mean sitting in an office all day and dealing with employees. Um, and we just happened to see a five second clip on television of alpacas, um, Googled them and couldn't see any downsides. So 11 weeks later, we took delivery of four pregnant girls. Mm. Um, the four turned into eight. And then we had a few more extravagances and ended up with 40. They are quite unusual, though. It's not what I expect to find in the Cotswolds. <laughs> uh, where are they from originally? They actually originate from um, Peru, Bolivia, the sort of South Americans. When they first came, it was with the Incas, really. And they used them for everything, from meat, from pack animals, for the fleece for, for fibre. This herd of alpacas had their annual share a few days ago. And on average, one animal will yield one and a half kilograms of wool. As one of a handful of alpaca breeders in the Cotswold Hills, Mim and Adrian have learned to spin, felt and weave their homegrown alpaca fleece. So we've seen the animals in the field, they've been sheared, so this is, this is literally how it comes off the backs. So if we want to do anything with this, we really need to, to what we call card it, but it's basically combing the fibres in the same direction. So then we can either spin with it or we can, as we're doing, moving on to peg looming with yeah. it. So it's very, very simple, hence I'm allowed to do it. <laughs> and we just put a little bit in the, on the, the side here, mm -hmm. and we just turn the handle. This way? That's right. Other Actually, way. Other, other way. way. There we go. There we go. So it's like a brush. It is exactly yeah, like a brush. Sure. And here's more. There. Out. It's coming here. OK. So it comes out on the drum. The wall is now ready to be woven, and I'm going to have a go at peg looming. These are warps, and what we're going to do is add the wefts across. Okay. So all these pegs have a warp going through them, and that's what it attaches to. And very simply, um, you take a piece of this, and you just join it by twisting it okay. together, like that. And then you go in and out. Yeah. In and out, twist. This looks simple enough that even I can have a go. Up to you. Proof will be in the pudding. Over huh? you. So we're twisting. That's right. In and out. And out. Carry on with the twisting. At the end. And when you get to the end, you just go back again. In and out. Carry on twisting. Always twisting in the same direction. Yep. Yeah. In and out. Are you doing this as well? There we go. Yeah. Slowly but surely, I'm getting to grips with this peg looming but it's time to weave our way back to Alan and Sue and discover if they've made any decisions on our properties. Well, Sue and Alan, what a couple of days we've had. To lure you back from Switzerland, <laughs> we're trying to achieve your Cotswold dream. Let's just reflect on each of them. I mean, we started with something very traditional. You wanted character. It was, yeah, it's unique, very special. But internally for me, the flow of the house didn't work. It was because you're accommodating 
a chapel as well as other 18th century parts, it was something which would be too much and too difficult to accommodate what we wanted it to be. So from there, we moved you forward a few centuries. Yeah. <laughs> How did you feel about house number two? I really liked house number two, uh, particularly when we first walked up to it because the colour of the stone used there was so warm. It, there was just something very special about that. The only thing perhaps on reflection that was negative about the inside was there were too many rooms. In other words, it was just that little bit too big and that sounds... Oh, see. I know. <laughs> so we yes. had oh, a bit mm. too small, we've gone too yeah. big. With the mystery house, did we get it just right? I mean, it was a surprise, wasn't it? Number one, we, yeah, we delivered surprised. a walled garden. We certainly <laughs> did. That was completely left field, absolutely, totally unexpected and by far for me, the best of the three. It was something which had character, but the character was modern. The fact that the house very much is situated in and around the beautiful gardens, including that lakeette, for want of a better word, outside the main living area, that really transforms the look of the house. Listening to you, I've got a feeling that you perhaps like one of our properties more than you, but am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Have you fallen in love with any of them? I, th for me, the third property, the mystery house, is the one which I would be seriously interested in. But I think Sue <laughs> might, might have another opinion. Am I right, Sue? Do you have a different opinion? Slightly. I think I didn't quite feel the love for the infrastructure of the house as I did for the second house. However, the garden is absolutely amazing and I realise it fills a number of Alan's dreams. So I think we've got a lot of talking to do, that's for sure. And what will make it brilliant for us is if you do find a home pretty soon and make the move. So do let us know. We certainly will. Thank yes, you very much. Well, the mystery house seems to have done it again. A very non-traditional Cotswold property in a very idyllic Cotswold setting. And it seems to have fulfilled Alan's dreams. And for Sue, I think if she can find a way of putting her stamp on it, it could be the house for her too. I'll see you next time on Escape to the Country. Your face, I start to feel your touch so sweet that